entertained a bit. I know it's been a while since you so it's like for me. I, uh, you know, life kind of happens. You become adult and you just, things start spiraling out of control. Then, point in time, I'll finally get my life back into control and, you know, shit can't change. But, like, my mentality has changed. Basically, I was able to, like, focus. My anxiety had calmed down and then, soon as things start to get a little mentally better, better. Next thing I know, like, my life started spiraling out of control. I'm like, I took a break from social media. I wasn't talking to anybody unless it was break related. It kind of changed a little, like, it happened so quickly. One moment everything was fine, and next thing you know, you were getting news about a family member having a stroke twice in one week. And it's like, I've dealt with things, like, things like that in family before, but was never like this close to like this close home and it's just like one week my great grandmother was fine the next week she wasn't and then the next week and it's literally like my mind just knew something was gonna happen like I wasn't even able to like how do I explain it like something clicked for me and I just I knew I wasn't mentally okay it's like my mind was getting ready for some bad news it seemed like everything that was said to me, whether it was good or bad, just made me feel really sad. Everything was just, like, anything anybody said to me, I felt like I just wanted to blow my eyes out. And I was really, like, depressed for a couple of days. And then one day I went to, I went to work and uh, my co-worker wouldn't let me be sad, so we really, like, had a good time with being at work and the last and stuff. And then I get home that night to get a phone call saying that my great grandmother passed. And this is first time I actually had to deal with a death in a family that was so close. And I'm like, I didn't know how to take it, but I still went into work the next day. And I'm like, I don't know how I did that. I was an emotional wreck. Like, nobody could touch me. People thought I was mad or something because we really. I'm usually the happy go lucky person where I make everybody laugh. And that wasn't the case. I couldn't. No matter what I did. And if somebody asked me if I was okay, I wanted to cry. But I still came into work, did what I had to do, knowing that I didn't have to, because of how stressful my job is. I just like still went. That's what was never know I like I kept my distance and just like I kinda like didn't completely deal with it and then this work is starting to get to me and then you know like all this other stuff that's going on me and my anxiety it just doesn't work that way no matter how, how many times you tell yourself you're okay or I'm okay nothing's wrong when you have anxiety no matter what you do you always think the work so like it got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore and I literally like I told my manager, I need to find cover. I literally had two days before I was off for two days straight. And I told my manager, I can't do it. If I come into work, like, I'm going to quit. I know I'm going to have a mental breakdown and I'm going to quit. I couldn't do it. And literally, I could tell. I haven't been able to sleep or anything. And that night, all I got, if I did fall asleep, all I did was have things up. Have a mental breakdown, I would quit. And, you know, after you get an age, can't quit a job. Well, you choose not to quit a job because it helps pay the bills. And you choose not to quit a job because just because you don't like it. She was actually very understanding because I explained her why I needed off. Like, I literally haven't, like, called off out of work or took a day off. Like, usually I request it off and I get it. And if I can't get it off, then get it off. Like, if I can't find a cover, I can't find a cover. I was at the point where I didn't want to go to work. It was so bad, my anxiety was so bad that I was willing to get in trouble to not show up, to not be there. But she understood, and I explained to her why, because I knew that. Because I don't, everybody knows I never take off. I'm always there, I stay as long as I need it, I do whatever I need to do. And I just started to catch up to me because, you know, we were like, not everybody wants to do their job, and I was like, we all have the same job. And since the other main girls can't be there, it's left to fall on me and I have all this responsibility and I'm like only it's been only been day number four of work. 
I mean, I've had two days in between the five days. I've had two days in between because I'm always on Friday and Saturday. But Thursday, I was 11 hours straight because, you know, because everybody wants to panic and overreact and go crazy. My job shouldn't even be open. I'm like, people need to learn how to make something with them. It's, it's, it's like not good to do, but it's the truth. Like, why do we need to risk ourselves just to be here at work to just make coffee for some people? Like, it doesn't make any sense. But, and, you know, it's a lot worse for other people because it's not just because of being older. Yeah, I'm only 29, but also, like, me and the rest of my family, we all have bad asthma. And we shouldn't even be out with me with my, uh, my anxiety. I'm thinking the worst right now because I have bad asthma. And because of being stressed and trying to like overcome my job and everything, being around all these chemicals, here I am about to, I overheat myself and I'm happy, I can't breathe. And I still haven't been able to get my ass on the control. It's only the second day. And, but I think I need to take the time to relax. And not think the way I was at the point where I was able to delete my Instagram app and my Facebook app. So that way I won't be on it. I won't be tempted to look at it. Like, yeah, I keep snap because snap is literally like the only site I'm actually on, even though I'm not constantly like updating on it. But it's just hard when you have anxiety and you just, you don't want to think the worst, but your mind won't let you because it's your worst enemy. I'm supposed to be doing like a month thing, but here I am just like, that must be sick me. But there's a reason why, like, I've been going for a while and like, even though I know it, it's not a lot of people and who's watching me, but it doesn't mean I'm not still trying to do something, right? I'm not really trying to be like all these other YouTubers and just like do reactions and um, pranks and stuff like that. But yeah, I want to do pranks because it's funny. But um, I actually want to use this like a video diary so people know, like people can understand like you're not the only one that like, feels this way. But it's not that easy. I would love to get back into my film, but. Not a lot of people want to just ask and support a friend to support or somebody who's already made it to want to support your friend like I don't get it. Me, I'm like, I'm a good friend. I'll support you. I'll support all my friends. If I know that you're, you're a real friend, I'm going to support you. Even if we just met and we're just slowly professing this to your friend, I'm still going to support you because that's the type of person I am. I literally want to use this channel to connect with other people and let people have an understanding of who I am as a person. Because a lot of people don't get me and I'm okay with that, but I know there's other people out there that are feeling like the same thing as me, but I'm like, so the people around me and my brothers, they don't understand how my anxiety works because, to be honest, I feel like in order to understand anxiety or depression, you have to go through it yourself. And a lot of people do not view the world how I see it because I always say there's more to this world than that is on for me. I'm such a big conspiracy theorist, but... To be honest, I'm just, I'm trying to live my life as I can, but I'm tired of just surviving. I want to be able to, I want to live my life until I die, basically. I want to do all the things I want, I've always wanted to do. Like, travel is one of the things. I'm tired of being where I'm at. I'm tired of working a job that it's not going to take me where I want to be. I want to be a published writer, like, I want to make movies, but I don't want to be in the entertainment business because it's a scary thing. If I could just put my film up on YouTube, I'm perfectly fine with it. I don't remember the last time I wrote poetry or wrote a song or actually played my piano. I tried drawing, but the way my hands set up two minutes into drawing, my hand is cramping up, locking up, and there's nothing I can do about it. I know you're doing the one too.
the field, I know my account says it's pen, but yes, I can see you, but I'm a pen by my day, so I love pen. It keeps the colors and do what they want. And that's how I see it. Pen is kind of like, they keep to themselves, but then they also keep to each other, if that makes sense. They do what they want, and not really ever care, and that's how I want to be. I just want to be happy. I want to enjoy myself. I want to do what I want to do. And so, spread love and help others too.
we have people on our circle that we can talk to, but a lot of people do not understand where we come from. No one's people would understand. But I feel like, you know, if you don't, if you're not. If you haven't been to it yourself, you're not going to understand how to spit my life. But my channel is a place where anybody can come. Whole walks of life, no matter how old you are, how young you are. Just know that this is a place where we can all come together and just be ourselves. Catch you in the next video. I'm a fan of this. It's a place where you can all be cute, cuddly. And do it all we please without anybody judging us because that's what this show is for. Almost, it's over with my mouth, but.